I'm Joe from The Nocturnal. How are you doing today, Michael? Hey, I'm good. How you doing, Joe? I'm doing wonderful. Can you tell me about when you first got your role as Hank and kind of your the pro the process behind that? Yeah, I got. I, I think I got this part around 2015 or 16. It was kind of going back that far, and um, I just loved it. I mean, I loved the whole package and the the rest of the people that were involved and everything, and um, just thought it would be very exciting. W were you able to kind of develop th this character at all? or add a little bit of your own comedy to, to yeah. Hank? Well, yeah. I mean, it, it kind of happens that way when you're working on these things that you, um, you fool around a, a lot, you know, you fool around while you're recording. Cause there's, it's different than being on a movie set where there's um, this whole machinery, you know, and everything takes so long to set up and there's only so many hours available in the day and you have to kind of, you know, use your time very wisely. It's, it's, it's not quite the same in the recording studio because you, you have a lot of time to experiment mm. and fool around and, and do do it all kinds of different ways. So, and feel what feels funny or so, and you can just try everything. And if it doesn't work, they'll throw it away. And, you know, and if it works, it'll go in. So yeah, you end up fooling around a lot. And a lot of that makes it in. When you're like fooling around and imagining this character, like, yeah. uh, can you explain a little bit of the process of imagining, you know, what it's like to be an animated dog? <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, that you just have to use your imagination. You kind of, you kind of, you know, have the scene described to you the way it's going to be animated and you kind of, you know, you kind of have to see it in your mind and, um, and bring it to life, you know, before you see it. So it's takes, you know, some imagination, but I think we're all just, um, at least me, I'm very programmed to know kind of how cartoons, you know, work and the kind of logic that they work on and the kind of feeling that they have. So you just, you just go off of that, your internal, you know, wiring. Were you able to work across from some of the actors in some of the scenes or was it mostly, you know, even with COVID and everything, mostly you just working alone and hoping this works? Yeah, it was mostly alone. And, you know, even through COVID, I, I worked from home doing doing this movie. And, um, you know, depending on the director and, and the writers and everybody who's on the, you know, on the session with you, you know, depending on them to help you bring it to life. But there was one recording session that I got to do with Samuel L. Jackson a few years ago. And that was a highlight of the whole project for me, just to get to be around him and, and work with him and play off of him in, in real life in the room. And it must be exciting for you, like finally, like, you know, what, seven years ago, first being introduced yeah. to this project, then finally, you know, seeing it come to life. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Looking back at your career, what's like an underrated role that you're really proud of that doesn't get recognized enough? I don't know. Um, I don't really know. I mean, um, I don't know. I don't know what gets recognized and what doesn't. I mean, I guess I just know based on kind of what people mention to me. But um, I put Scott Pilgrim up there as number one, uh, Michael Sarah. Well, I could have guessed that. I think based on your 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 movie cards that you have up on the wall and the kind of taste that I see you having in movies. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, thank you, Michael. And um, we're just <laughs> okay, excited man. for this to come up. Cool. Thanks. Nice talking to you, Joe. Tell me, Rob, what drew you to telling this story? Um. You know, I think, uh, you know, the idea of telling a story about a dog who basically has to survive being in a world of cats seemed like so much fun uh, and so, you know, funny. And, uh, uh, and, and, you know, and I think it's turned out to be that. I just think of like all other movies you've created that I grew up watching and being inspired by. How do you intentionally like create this film to connect with both kids and adults? So I, I think, you know, um, when I was uh, a, an artist getting started, um, one of my mentors was a, a director, an animation director named Chuck Jones, who was very famous for directing Bugs Bunny and Road, Roadrunner and, you know, Daffy Duck and Porky Pig cartoons. Um, and, and one of the things that I learned from him was that when they made those films, they never had kids in mind. They were only making them to entertain themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, I, I'm sort of a big kid, you know, I'm a kid at heart for sure. Um, and so I, I sort of feel like we're making a film that should appeal to all parts of me, you know, to, you know, my, my more childish side and my more, uh, you know, mature side so that, you know, that there's something in it for everybody. And making a film, especially directing and producing a film, there's always challenges. How have you um, just stayed relentless through specifically making this movie through any of the challenges that came up? Sure. Um, I mean, gosh, you know, there's always different kinds of challenges. There's never been a project that I've ever worked on where we haven't had 
obstacles and difficulties and 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 things to deal with. Um, the big one for this movie was we made it during COVID, so um, it, it, you know it was during the lockdown and quarantine, and so all the artists from the studio had to go home and work alone on their computers, which sounds like it would be very lonely and sad, but actually it turned out to to work quite well because we met every day, just like I'm talking to you right now. Uh, and this is how we made the movie. So we would review the work and 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 uh, and it actually turned out really quite to, you know, to be a good process. What's your um, advice for young directors? Um, first of all, I mean, uh, you know, getting a chance to, to work in film, you know, whether it's doing a short, actually that's how I got my start. Um, um, it, it, it's such a great, it's such a great medium and it's such a great opportunity to, to be able to tell stories this way. Um, you know, I, I, my advice to, to, to you would be, um, you know, dream big, you know, have, have big ambitions and don't be afraid to, uh, you know, to roll up your sleeves and get in there and do the work. Well, thank you so much, Rob. We're excited for this to finally come out in theaters and for, um, yeah, yeah, I'm ex excited to see this with my feeling. Terrific. Thank you so much. Hey, I'm Joe from The Nocturnal. How are you doing today? Hey, hi, Joe. Thanks for having us. Hi. Absolutely. Kylie, I'll start with you. Tell me about when you first found out you got your role in this movie. Um, well, this was like a normal audition I got from my agent and we, my mom recorded it, the takes, audition takes on her phone. We didn't have like recording equipment back then. And it was last kind of last minute for me because I was moving to a new place. And, um, a few weeks later, um, uh, I, I got a call back for it and I was just so excited because I was able to meet the directors, Rob, Mark, and Chris and producers, casting directors, including Mel Brooks. And, um, a little while later, I got a call from my agent and manager saying that I booked the role of Amico, and I was so thrilled, and I was like jumping up and down so many times. Kathy, tell me, what about you? How long have you been on part of this project? I know some people have been, you know, working on it for a while, but when did you come in? Um, so I came in on this, uh, I guess, about almost a year before I actually heard that I had actually gotten the role of Little Mama. Um, it was something where they were still in the development process. So I met with Rob Minkoff and there were some additional lines and things that they were kind of throwing around. And so when I finally did actually uh, get the role of Little Mama, this happened during the height of COVID. And it was a very... Uh, it was a very difficult time because I didn't know what the other side of this was going to look like. But then I booked this and they sent this incredible attache case, like a 007 style where, you know, all of the mics and the equipment and the screens and the this and the that. And then Rob Minkoff, our director, recorded himself like 007, a full video on how to put together all of the different pieces of the equipment. Oh, wow. So my husband's help. And so this film represents, I, and I actually shot this in my closet. So and this, this film represents hope and also seeing that there was a golden uh, silver lining in a time that was kind of dark. And also my closet now will never be the same. Well, that's so much fun. And it's cool that, we, you know, we all get to learn to innovate in no matter what, you know, genre of life we're in. Kylie, tell me about developing your character, you know, and you've never been a cat before. And how do you, how do you develop this character and, and make her feel personable? Um, well, I kind of had to like create my character in my own imagination. And um, um, she had like traits of like fearless, powerful. And despite that she's so small, she will like never back down from a challenge. And she has like, um, she uses all her skills, charms, and even her flaws to fight the battle. And she has really good instincts and she has a super strong um, willingness to help um, Hank save the village. And she has wow. a true spirit of a samurai. Mm. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. And it's just uh, congratulations on this movie finally coming out. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. I'm Joe from The Nocturnal. Good to see you today, George. Hi, Joe. Good to see you. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. So I'd love to hear how you got became part of this project. It, you know, this movie ha has been over seven years in the making. When did you become involved in it? Uh, was it seven years? I was saying it feels like it's been about six years, so I'm uh, shortening it. Okay. <laughs> Seven years ago that they came to me and they uh, they said they, uh, they'd like me to do the character of Olga, and they told me something about it. And I thought it was a hilarious concept. Uh, 
But when they showed me the picture of Olga, I said, I'm fit, I'm slim, I'm not <laughs> obese. And, uh, there was this picture of a rotund, fat uh, samurai, uh, a cat samurai. And uh, they said, oh, no, no, he's got muscles, but they're hidden the underneath <laughs> of fat. Um, but I, I, they said, uh, this is about opposites coming together and uh, fi finding uh, uh, a way to work together and make the world better. And my, as it turned out, Olga was the, the, the uh, top samurai of an army of samurai at, uh, working for this lord called uh, Ikachu. Ikachu. He's a teeny tiny cat. I, I should first tell you, this is a land of cats, all cats, with one exception. There, I'll tell you what that one exception is after I describe the scene. All these cats, and there is this tiny miniature cat who is the lord of that region. And he, although he's tiny, he's got an ego as big as a mountain and everything has to be big for him. He, he uh, learns that the Shogun is coming to visit him. So he's gonna build a big, huge monster palace to greet him in. Everything is big, the, even the toilets are big. And he wants a big army of samurai and he wants a big samurai to be his top gun. And that's me, my character. But he's also obsequious to this tiny, arrogant, uh, ego-minded uh, uh, cat. So all the here's the givens, and it's very much like the world we live in today. But despite all the challenges, they come together. Uh, this one hero comes to save this uh, land. He's a dog. And we know how cats and dogs get together. Yeah. They're legendary for not being able to get along. And yet we find that there is something that each can respect and benefit from and work together and we live happily ever after. <laughs> well, thank you so much, George. And I know you've been an inspiration to so many people just throughout your career. And we're just excited to, for this film to come out. And you know, for people to see this character that you've created over the past six, seven years. Six, seven years. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. It's seven years. I learned something from you. Okay, awesome. <laughs>